morning. I will call the MAG Economic Development Committee. Committee meeting to order. Uh, for those around the table, please turn on your microphones when speaking. And for those participating on Zoom, please state your name when making a comment or asking a question. And again, I will confirm with our MAG staff that we do have a quorum established. Thank you. Uh, at this time, please join me for the pledge. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, I think I skipped over a page. Right? Gotcha. Okay. So the MAG public comment process allows members of the public to comment on items on today's agenda or on items that fall under MAG's jurisdiction. So again, if you would like to comment at today's meeting, please fill out a white request to speak card located on the information table in the hallway, and please give it to our MAG staff. And again, if you're parked in the garage, parking validators are available on the information table in the hallway. And if you purchased a transit ticket to come to the meeting, please see staff for a ticket as well. Now, hearing assisted devices are also available from MAG staff, and we will now begin the meeting with a roll call of all members. Thank you, Chair. I will go through the list of members. Please make sure you're unmuted and indicate if you're present when I call your name. Ruben Alonzo. Here. Thank you. Steve Betts. Council Member Chuck Bongiovanni. Tony Bradley. Here. Thank you. Paul Carden. Vice Mayor Tom Durham. Council Member John Edwards. Supervisor Galvin. James Griffiths. Council Member Janine Guy. Present. Thank you. Council Member Hampton. Here. Thank you. Mayor Hermosillo. Here. Thank you. Sintra Hoffman. Vice Mayor Judd. Here. Thank you. Council Member Keating. Here. Thank you. Jim Kenny. Here. Thank you. Mayor LaVault. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Our chair is here. Vice Chair Malnar. Present. Thank you. Mike Markham. Vice Chair Maggie McMinn. Here. Thank you. Vice Mayor Moore. Here. Thank you. Council Member O'Brien. Here. Thank you. Council Member Oliphant. Here. Thank you. Vice Mayor Pineda. Council Member Poston. Darcy Renfro. Mark Sanders. Here. Thank you. Todd Sanders. Here. Thank you. Mayor Smith. Council Member Summers. Scarlett Spring. Here. Thank you. Marisa Walker. Here. Thank you. Bob Worldsley. Here. Thank you. Is there anyone whom I missed? Chair, we have quorum. Okay, thank you. And uh, next we'll proceed with the Pledge of Allegiance and please stand and help and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Next, we'll move to the call to the audience. This is an opportunity for the public to comment on items that fall under MAG's jurisdiction that are not on the agenda or that are on the agenda for discussion and not for action. So 15 minutes will be provided for the call to the audience agenda item unless the committee requests an exception to this limit. Have we uh, received any, any comments or cards up to this point? Thank you, Chair. We have not received a comment card, but we have received one online comment. 
Okay, so at this time we will hear from the online comment. Is that correct? Thank you, Chair. I will read the online comment submitted by Sheila Stoddard of Goodyear, Arizona. For a state that is a desert and always in drought, why are we building chip plants here? I bet people didn't know that it federalizes the water supply by doing so and uses enormous amounts of water. Why are so many manufacturing buildings popping up without a company moving into it, just being built everywhere? It drives down home values and seems rather odd considering we can't afford anything since AZ is third in the, in the US for inflation. Economically wise, there are poor decisions being made by people in charge that is negatively impacting residents of Maricopa County, and it appears that it is on purpose. Chair, this is the end of the comment, and we have no more comments. Okay, thank you. And, and, and just for future reference, MAG, again, also provides the opportunity for members of the public to submit written comments via the MAG website one hour prior to the meeting. And I want to thank that individual for uh, providing that comment. So at this time, we'll move to the approval of the April 4th, 2023 Economic Development Committee meeting minutes. Uh, the item is approval of April 4th Economic Development Committee meeting minutes. Uh, at this point, does any member of the committee have questions regarding the minutes? Uh, again, prior to the approval of minutes, uh, do we have any members of the public who wish to comment? Chair, we have not received any comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there, at this point then, if there are no comments, uh, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes? Chair? So, yes, sir. Uh, I move that we approve the, the minutes as presented. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Um, and at this time, can I have a, a voice vote of those in the room? Those in favor, say aye. 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 Those against, say nay. Thank you. Uh, staff, can you take a roll call of the members participating virtually? Thank you, Chair. Members of the Economic Development Committee, I will go down the list of members participating virtually. Please unmute and indicate how you vote. Ruben Alonzo? Yes. Thank you. Council Member Guy? Yes. Thank you. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Thank you. Mayor Hermosillo? Aye. Thank you. Vice Mayor Judd? Yes. Thank you. Council Member Keating? Mayor LaVault? Yes. Thank you. Chair Lewis? How do you vote? Oh, Seth, you're in the room. Sorry. Also, Jim Kenny? Aye. Thank you. Vice Mayor Moore? Aye. Thank you. Council Member Oliphant? Aye. Thank you. Mark Sanders? Todd Sanders? Aye. Thank you. Scarlett Spring? Aye. Thank you. Marisa Walker? Yes. Thank you. Bob Worlesey? Yes. Thank you. Is there anyone whom I missed? I was unable to unmute on time. This is Council Member Keating. Um, yes. Thank you, oh. Council Member Keating. Mark Sanders, I was able to unmute also. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Chair, the motion carries. Okay, thank you. We'll continue on with the agenda. And uh, again, I wanna thank the MAG Economic Development Committee uh, for considering this next very important item, the impact of the tribal gaming on the region. Now this committee seeks to understand market trends and key sectors by hearing from experts and practitioners like we did in February regarding semiconductors and in April for the biosciences. Now today, we'll be hearing from the subject matter experts about the effects of the gaming sector uh, among native nations, the economic development diversification and its impact also in the Gila River Indian community and impact uh, on one of the fastest growing parts of the region. And finally, we will hear about the new developments and programming by our beloved Phoenix Suns organization as well. And, and I'm gonna, I wanna thank Mag for this opportunity to highlight uh, all the incredible uh, accomplishments 
uh, partnerships uh, and, and contributions to this region. Uh, that's so important, especially now, as we're looking at a tremendous amount of growth and opportunity. Uh, and as a tribal leader, and, and this again, this is my last uh, meeting as chair of the Economic Development Standing Committee, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to highlight these very important, critical uh, parts of our region. Now, to start off, our Judy Ferreira, Executive Director of the Arizona Indian Gaming Association, and Chairman Robert Miguel of the Achin Indian Community chair of the board of the Arizona Indian Gaming Association who will be present. Now this item is for information and discussion. So we'll welcome both of you, um, Chairman Miguel and Ms. Ferreira to the podium. Thank you. Uh to the uh, Maricopa Association of Governments for allowing us the opportunity to present here this morning. In my language, I'd like to say good day to all of you. And before I begin, I'd like to recognize uh, my brother, St uh, Governor Stephen Lewis Rowe from the Gila River Indian community. Uh, not many people know, but Governor Lewis and myself, uh, we used to play ball against each other when we were much younger. So, <laughs> so it's good to have them. You know, now we think about it and we're in leadership together. You know, we were, at the same time we were going to be there, but it's always good to see him. It's always good to 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 have him a part of uh, associations and just a number of other opportunities for Indian country overall. So, uh, the impact of tribal gaming of the uh, for the region uh, passed in 1988 by Congress. The Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, IGRA, affirmed tribal sovereignty and established a framework for Indian gaming, which obviously was a game changer for tribes, not just in Arizona, but throughout the country. IGRA provides a statutory foundation for Indian gaming operations as a means of prompting economic development, tribal self-sufficiency, and, str and strong tribal government. <clears throat> Excuse me. At that time, tribal leaders in Arizona looked at IGRA as an opportunity for their tribes, nations, and communities. Since 1993, Indian gaming on tribal lands has have been providing jobs and fund for needed services on many lands. Obviously, it was a game changer for a lot of tribes. We never fathomed or thought that we would have the opportunities as we have here today. So it's great. Currently, 16 tribes in Arizona have 24 casinos. I can say that the 25th, the Santan Mountain Casino, the Gila River Indian community is moving forward on, will be opening late at the latter part of the month. And ground was broken on Desert Diamond Casino in the Northwest Valley in April. So congratulations to our two sister tribes. Um, in speaking with leaders who were the first leaders of tribal gaming, tribal gaming, as I mentioned, has exceeded their expectations on what gaming could be. I can say that more than 25,000 jobs are generated from tribal gaming. And with that, our industry is one of the top industries in the state. And there's plenty more job opportunities that are gonna be created through different ventures, whether it was through gaming or related to gaming for our respective communities. Uh, of those nearly 14,000 are, di are direct jobs, 5,600 are indirect and over 5,000 are induced. <clears throat> On April 15, 2021, the amended Tribal State Gaming Compact was signed into law by Tribes of Arizona and Governor Ducey and approved by the Secretary of the Interior on May 24, 2021. <clears throat> it's an effective date. The compact set forth the types of permitted games, adopted technical standards for gaming machines, authorized the state to inspect comp casinos, requires background investigations and licensees of casino employees and vendor companies, and requires tribes to contribute a portion of their net gaming revenue to state and local governments. Newly permitted games include newly added game, uh, class three games, event wagering and sports, thank you, fantasy sports contests. <clears throat> On June 1st, 2021, there was approximately 15,000 300 slots in operation. As of May 1st, 2023, 18,700 machines are currently in operation. What does this mean to tribes? I tell you what, as I mentioned, it's been a game changer. We've been able to provide services for our members and trying to be as self-sufficient as possible through ventures overall, benefiting not just 
the tribes in Arizona and their people, but the state of Arizona. It makes us good, makes us feel proud that we're able to give back to the state in a number of ways, whether it's through public safety, <clears throat> health care, and just other needs in, in general. Education is also a key component of why we give our, our funding back to the state. We've done a number of great things for the state of Arizona. Again, things that we thought we could never do. The auction in the community, for instance, we actually have been able to play a huge role in, in bringing, help bringing prestigious events to the state of Arizona to let the nation know that Arizona is a player when it comes to big events, from the Super Bowl to the NCAA Final Four to the NCAA, uh, NCAA College Football Championship. So we're, we're able to do those things, waste management open. And again, it's giving back to the state and letting them know that we are actually going to be um, a player with you together to bring these prestigious events. I'd like to share personally, uh, a really quick, if I can put this on the record of, uh, of <clears throat> three photos that it's person that that's personally affected me as far as gaming and the, the money <clears throat> that has provided for healthcare purposes. I don't know who I could give this to, but they're actually, I, I, on my apologies, I wasn't able to put it on the, the, the screen. <clears throat> but the photos are, are of my daughter. I've got seven kids, five girls and two boys. And my youngest one was born with the cleft palate, with the top of her left mouth actually missing. And so through surgeries uh, that, again, that, that occurred, we were able to prepare and able to see her develop into uh, a, such a beautiful woman. Today, she's 13, young lady. The first one is a photo of her as a baby when she was born. The second one is when she was two years old. And the third one is actually her with her grandma making traditional foods. Uh, and it's, it's one of our, our special um, topics to discuss because, again, that's what Gaming Dollars has done for me personally. And I thank the state of Arizona and the people who passed, helped pass gaming. And I know back when it was first put on the ballot, it, it barely passed. But as the decades have gone and, and we've been able to see what gaming dollars has not did, not only for our tribes, but the state, that, you know, it can be done. We did it the right way. And one of the, the, the key components to gaming that we're really, really proud, very proud of is the integrity of the game. You know, we, there was IGRA put down rules, regulations and guidelines. So did the state to the tribes, if we're gonna move forward in supporting your efforts, this is what you need to do. And we've, we've followed that to a, a tooth and nail from the beginning to the day. So the integrity of the game is very important to us and, and letting you all know that, you know, it can be done, it will be done the right way. And so we're very, very proud of that. And again, we've seen gaming prosper throughout the decades. And, uh, you know, we don't know what the future is gonna hold for us, but I want you guys to see and know what is done. And it's really, really been a game changer. It's been really, really key to our efforts overall. You know, we've been able to give back, again, 80, $877 million to education, $438 million to emergency services and trauma care. So, again, the, these, um, these uh, statistics and just different, um, again, settings as far as, you know, what we've been able to provide to cities and towns, counties, tourism, wildlife, conservation is in your packet. But you know what I'd really, really love to stress, I know we've got limited time here as far as what it's done to respective tribes, particularly the Metro, but there's 22 tribes in Arizona. We all have stories. We all need to go out and see what we, we, they've been able to do to the respective communities from providing running water, electricity, just the simple necessities. Now we're able to move forward. But although we do provide and we've made $2 billion that we've given back to the state and then some, you know, there's still needs out there. I mean, we, we still haven't caught up. We probably won't. But this gives us an opportunity to be able to, to move forward and give our people, our kids, a future and hope. You know, we've, you know one, of the, one of the most beautiful things I could see in Indian country is that, you know, through education, we've been able to provide college tuition. And uh, again, we've seen uh, a lot of these young kids that have gone on to college become professions, respectful professions in their respective fields, whether it's through the state, the county, governments overall. So, you know, again, in my travels, I've seen a lot of uh, natives take uh, steps in becoming leaders in different realms. 
And, uh, you know, we've seen, obviously, uh, Secretary of the Interior, Deb Howland, you know, take a seat at the table in Biden's administration. So we're making those strides. And again, it's, it's a lot of it has to do with the opportunities that gaming has provided us. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of stories to be told. And we do appreciate uh, the opportunity to tell our story. But again, this is a limited story because we only have a little, limited, a little bit of time to tell this story. But please, I always welcome you guys, everybody to go out into our communities and learn about our communities because that's going to build a better relationship overall. And, um, you know, I want to thank our executive director for, again, this is her 24-7 job and she keeps us on track overall and uh, keeps us informed of just different things. As Governor Lewis knows, we have a number of topics on our agenda that we can't just focus primarily on one. But again, um, executive directors like Judy Ferrer in the gaming industry has been really, really crucial and beneficial to, to who we are and, and, and how we're going to get there. So um, again, I really, really do respect and appreciate the opportunity to be here. And, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not, this is not against the other 21 tribes, but I always say, because I'm coming from Ak Chin, we all win with Ak Chin, remember that. <laughs> and I want to make a pitch 98.7 FM because they are the radio station of the Ak Chin community, number one sports radio show in Arizona with Ron Wolfley, and we have a commercial on there every day. But, you know, we're going to start presenting uh, not only auction, but the other 22 tribes on, on, on the broadcast. So, again, I'm sorry. Again, Governor Lewis, thank you so much uh, for, uh, you know, being um, a leader within not only the respective tribes, but with associations and opportunities such as MAG. I've always heard great things about MAG. So, again, thank you. And, uh, again, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Miguel, and you've always been such a, an articulate spokesman uh, in, in, in whatever leadership uh, position that you've held, both with your both with the auction Indian community and also with with the the, the many positions that, that you've held, both uh, in Arizona, locally and nationally as well. So thank you, uh, Ms. Ferreira, please. Thank you. I, I'm Judy Ferreira, member of the San Carlos Apache tribe from San Carlos, Arizona, and I have the honor to serve the Arizona Indian Gaming Association. And one thing that we do is advocate, educate, partner, and promote. And as we're doing this, we realize that tribal gaming has made a difference, not just to tribes, but also, as, as Chairman mentioned, to all of Arizona. I hate to say this, Chairman, you say we all win with Ak Chin, but I think I can kind of steal we all win with tribal gaming. And sometimes we don't always know that. And, you know, in your packet, there was information about over $1.98 billion in, in contributions to date and counting. I met with uh, this morning with the Arizona Department of Gaming. We already passed the $2 billion mark. This was done a long time ago. That was um, 12 million that we needed to, to do. And we'd already did that. It was just a matter of the reporting that they will do in July. So we've already met the $2 billion. And you know, the one thing is not just the integrity, but it's the partnerships. I know that you're looking at the $209 million to cities, towns, and counties. That comes on a, on the that update of that figure comes from on an annual basis and that will be reported in September. But what has that meant to, what does that mean? What's your story? Um, I know some, just looking at some of the opportunities we've had to share, we've got to push in one time a fire engine into a firehouse. How cool was that? Knowing that what they had before couldn't hardly even do the job. Saving those, you know, having that resource. And I, unfortunately, I had the opportunity to meet some fire, uh, some um, uh fire folks that I was had a little incident. But one of the things I said, I worked with tribal gaming, they told me, Oh, do you know anything about the Guadalupe fire engine? And I said, Yes, I actually got to push it in. And I said, why? Said, Man, that's nice. And I said, um, so Tempe, uh, firefighters, do you have engine envy? And they said, Yes, we do. Because that's one of the best. And how cool is that, that these resources, tribal gaming resources are going back and, and helping to make a difference. Um, some of the things mentioned, uh, emergency housing and repairs and, and accessibility, this is to cities, towns, and counties. Officer safety, safety support um, by purchasing tasers and trauma 
kit, uh, trauma kits, tactical trauma kits, free funding to offer free vision screening for 7,000 children, purchase of sporting equipment, purchase of a shooting, uh, of a sporting, uh, uh, of a school bus, I'm sorry, active shooter rescue task force, park shades, the, the lists go on and on. And it's $2 billion of not just things that have actually gone to to the state, well, just the state of Arizona, that's a long time. But along the way, we made the relationships, these relationships that have brought us to the table and allowed us to be at the table. When it starts to planning our future, we are our neighbors. Maricopa Association of Governments, you are neighbors to the Gila River Indian community, the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation, your neighbors to the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community, your neighbors to the Akjin, and along all across Arizona, our, we are neighbors. We're working together, we're partnering together. And one thing that we're able to do is we've got to start planning together and working together. I think this is an excellent example of Maricopa Association of Governments. I, I too have heard many opportunities as far as what MAG does, but I'm gonna ask you for some help in about a month. As the mayors, as the leaders of the of mag i'm going to ask you for your stories because i need your stories because we're going to be having our our arizona indian gaming association expo and we're going to ask you for your stories of how tribal gaming has impacted you and that's something that there's two billion uh reasons as to why tribal gaming is working in arizona we want your stories share with us those once again, I'm Judy Ferreira, the Executive Director of the Arizona Indian Gaming Association. It's been an honor to work with you. Thank you, Stephanie, for all your coordination. Thank you, Governor, and everybody for what you do for um, the town I, I sort of stay in on the weekdays. And, and that's something, I mean, the city I stay in. And it's something that I think is, you know, let's continue to do, be able to, um, you know, to work together especially when tribal gaming benefits, not just tribes, but it benefits all of Arizona. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ferrer. Thank you, uh, Chairman McGill. Are there any questions or comments from, from our committee at this time? If not, thank you again. Appreciate your, the, your presentation and your time. Uh, we'll be going next to number six, the impact of Wild Horse Pass Development Authority on the regional economy. And now this next item is, is a presentation from Elizabeth Antone. She is the interim general manager of the Wealth Horse Pass Development Authority. She is a member of the Gila River community. In fact, we grew up together. And uh, Ms. Antone will present how this authority is driving development in such a fast growing part of the region. And this item is on the agenda again for information and discussion. Uh, Ms. Antone, please, you have the floor. Good. Uh... Good morning, good afternoon, I shall say. Uh, in my in our traditional language, I'll introduce myself. Uskuk Dash, Anya Upjugik, Elizabeth Anton, Bunky, Uskuk. And just traditionally, we do introduce at least our parents. Um, my, my, an Ag, Cecil Anton, and Stephanie Goulet. Um, my name is Elizabeth Anton. I'm a proud member of the Gila River Indian community. I am a uh, proud recipient of what gaming can accomplish. I'm a, um, a, a first graduate of the University of Arizona and my family. Um, my son just graduated in May as a second generation. Um, and he obviously um, is, it's, it's from gaming revenues that he's been able to graduate as well. My sister just graduated too. Uh, we are all wildcats. Uh, the governor knows that. I know he's from ASU. Um, <laughs> but um, nonetheless, um, I'm here to give a presentation on um, the impact of uh, what uh, gaming has accomplished for our community. Um, I speak very proudly because um, this started, uh, this endeavor started about 21 years ago um, with the leadership at that time and their vision of the area um, of, of what they foresaw um, outside of gaming, uh, diversifying that revenue. Um, is, if you're aware of the, with the area, uh, there's an area called Maricopa Wells. If you could go to the next slide. Um, it uh, actually used at one point was a stopping place um, for folks who were traveling through the West. 
Um, and it's not far from where Wild Horse Pass is, um, but they trade it with us as Akimaratam and Peapot. Um, and so um, it, it actually was a, a, a place where um, two stage coaches, um, it was like their main hub, the Butterfield, and they, they call it the San Antonio, San Diego main line. Um, as well, at one time, it was a primary military telegraph post. Um, how we got our name, um, at one point, there was wild horses that were in the area. They still are in the area. They've moved south. Um, they sometimes drive our farmers crazy because they eat their alfalfa. Um, but we still have our wild horses. Um, obviously, with development, they just moved a little bit south. Um, if you could go to the next slide. Um, the mission statement for the Development Authority um, is to create revenue streams for the Gila River Indian community, to create jobs for our community members, to maintain and protect the community's assets as well as our natural resources, um, and to develop business relationships with valued stakeholders. And when, um, you know, I, I had to, to ask about that, um, you know, valued stakeholders, um, and I include uh, the various jurisdictions that are within the area. Um, we have, I have, I included a little bit of history about WIPTA, um, we, how we're funded, um, our main um, capital projects are established through an enterprise fund. Um, we added businesses in 2010, um, them being the GRBE businesses uh, under WIPTA management, which are really C stores. Um, we added a golf course and we added Hill River displays and I'll go into those businesses later. Um, the next slide shows a WIPTA master plan, and this master plan was established um, in 2020. Um, I'm not going to go through all 40 years of it, um, but it, I will go through um, the main areas of where we foresee um, development in the area. Um, if you could go to the next slide. Um, we see office um, in the area as well as industrial. Um, and as far as industrial is concerned, you know, we see it from the East Valley to the West Valley. I travel a lot, um, you know, just being on business as well as personally, I like to see. I'm, I'm amazed at the growth in the East Valley, Far East Valley. Uh, we border um, on Arizona farms and um, Hunt Highway. Um, our, our border is that far east. Um, we are, um, we would strategically place uh, industrial within the Wild Horse Pass area because the community has put in millions of dollars into our property. Um, we also see hospitality. Hospitality is traditionally one of our strong points, um, but we continue, we will continue to look at hospitality. The one thing that I didn't mention on here is um, event space, event type of um, space. When I speak about that, I, I think of entertainment, um, both um, with the, as well as the Gila River Gaming Enterprises. Um, we work together. We don't work against each other um, to figure out, you know, what's what's best for both. Um, we are in the same area demographically, so um, we we consistently coordinate. If you could go to the next slide, please. Um, we do continue to market the benefits of leasing on trust land. When I say trust land, I mean um, Native American communities. Um, you know, the community um, and every um, sovereign has their right to establish their own um, zoning and land restrictions. We have zoning and land restrictions. Um, we obviously um, do not as have as much taxes as state and counties. Um, there are new market tax credits available, as well as Indian wage and insurance tax credits. Um, as well, a lot of people don't know, um, businesses can claim an accelerated depreciation when they lease. Um, as well, Native American communities can establish um, federal trade uh, zones, foreign trade zones, excuse me. The next slide, please. So um, where we have hit um, in, in, I, I uh, applaud the community and its leadership um, as far as infrastructure. Um, infrastructure is important to any community, um, especially to, um, to us. Um, we are uh, 279,000 acres. Um, we are not small. Uh, we have um, you know, residents in every single district. Um, some live close, some don't live close, some are in subdivisions, but one of the things that the community and leadership has prioritized is um, upgrades to broadband water systems. We did take advantage. I, I note on here the um, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, 
Um, the one thing that how it hits economic development is we are able to capitalize off of those funds and use them in uh, economic development projects. So for us, it was uh, twofold. Um, we are able to utilize that money um, and, and also um, be able to better um, our economic development projects. The next slide, please. Uh, one, this is the um, this is traffic infrastructure or a road infrastructure um, that's very important to us at Wild Horse Pass. Um, as the valley has gotten bigger, um, everybody knows this part of I-10 um, is is fun, um, and I, I use the term fun loosely. Um, but um, one thing we have been working on is with um, ADOT and MAG on the new Germain Road overpass. Um, we are appreciative to uh, both um, MAG and ADOT for continuing to coordinate with us um, as this is important uh, as we continue to grow with the master plan um, and providing some more uh, road infrastructure. Um, right now, um, as, as you're aware, if the traffic gets backed up, they, they pretty much uh, go through the development authority off of Wild Horse Pass Boulevard, as well as um, if, if that's not available they obviously go down queen creek road so um we continue will continue to work with them we did do a traffic impact parking analysis for um, our master plan uh, that's been provided to mag so we certainly appreciate that opportunity the next slide please um i'm just going to hit some highlights i think um, most folks know our our anchor properties that are within the wild horse pass area is the wild horse pass resort and casino um, it is a AAA four diamond property. Um, it has over 1,100 slots, almost 450 rooms. Um, we they ex, the expansion in 2021 provided some additional square feet for ballroom space. Um, if you have not been to Prime Steakhouse, it, it has some very nice views of the valley. Um, it uh, anchors of all the eight restaurant offerings. Um, they have live entertainment weekly. And the employment um, for the casino is 1,450 staff members. Um, so that's obviously important to the region and the valley of, of how much um, the casino offers in employment. Next slide, please. Our golf course. Our golf course is our oldest property of the, of the development authority. It was established in 2000. Um, we have two, two 18 holes. Um, one is called Devil's Claw, which is a part of our our baskets, um, our traditional baskets um, and cattail. Um, under the leadership of the WIPTA Board of Directors, we changed uh, third party management after 20 years. Um, and I'm, I'm, it's always interesting when you have that change. Um, I'm excited for our next management group. Uh, we are planning to uh, a clubhouse expansion and refresh. Um, the clubhouse hasn't been changed in um, it's been over 10 years, I believe. Um, and we employ over 104 staff in that property. Um, the Sheraton Grand at Wild Horse Pass um, continues to be a AAA four, four diamond property. Um, it's Arizona's only AAA five diamond Forbes five star uh, fine dining Kai restaurant. Um, as well, we have a, a the five star spa. It's called Aji. Aji is one of our mountains in our community. Um, we just went through an $80 million room remodel, um, and that was finished in October 21. Uh, we got it done through COVID, um, and we employ over 500 staff at the, at the resort. Um, this is very, uh, for as a community, um, it continues to be a beacon of cultural hospitality in the United States. Um, every facet of our culture is in this resort. If you've never been there, I encourage you to go there. Um, it has a lot of our culture in there and, and the leadership at the time, they, um, they really uh, honed in on what was um, key to showcasing community. Our next piece is Rawhide. Um, we have event space there and I, I uh, included a picture of uh, one of the mud runs that we have there. And somebody has asked me when I'm gonna do a mud run. I don't know when I'm gonna do a mud run, but um, we host all kinds of different events. Um, we've have co had concerts. Um, we've had, um, we are getting ready to open our rodeo arena again. We have our rodeo arena there. Um, but we have different variations of, of uh, space there available for folks to, um, to rent. Um, we, have a, we have different clients who are repeat clients. So it's always nice um, when people come back. Um, the next slide, please. 
and, and, and also before you finish up, you know, I think we had a, a tremendous opportunity, both both the Gila Riverton community, I know Akshan, and being part of the host committee for the for the Super Bowl as well. Okay. And we hosted a number of events there that were really high profile that we we're proud of being able to have the infrastructure and the, and the facilities to host. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we had the um, the Eagles uh, stayed at our um, at our resort. Um, that was the third time we posted a Super Bowl team. Uh, they were not victorious. They kind of, they kind of, their little tradition, but um, that's okay. Um, we will make another tradition for the next time the Super Bowl. <laughs> but um, they also hosted their team party there, which is really interesting. The employers came. Normally they don't come to the team parties. It's really just family, but they did come to Rawhide. Um, it's interesting to get video of players doing line dancing in the middle of Rawhide. Um, there's these big, you know, football folks who are, um, it, it was a good time. Um, and obviously, as the chairman has stated, um, and sponsoring, being able to sponsor those types of events, um, obviously gives us marketing um, like crazy. Um, so it, those types of things are, are very well perceived public as well as showcasing our communities. Um, Gila River Business Enterprises is, um, is our gas stations that are located in each of our districts. Um, we have six of them, and we also have a grocery store, um, and that is in the uh, governor's home district. Um, I will highlight that later, but it employs also about up to 70. Right now, I believe we are at 70 percent community members who are employed there. Um, so there, we are getting ready to build an additional two. So there's um, that information is um, forthcoming. Um, our one of our other businesses is Hill River Displays. We have billboards located on I-10, State Route 347, State Route 202, uh, 87, as well as in the Santan area. We have 43 billboards. Um, we are currently looking at to add billboards to our um, our collection there. Um, of the lease properties in uh, the Wild Horse Pass area, if you could go to um, we have the Phoenix uh, Premium Outlet Malls, which is with Chelsea Simon. Um, they have stores, um, and so I just gave some brand names of Kate Spade, Tommy Bahama. Um, they will host events themselves. They had they do carnivals there, um, as well as um, I believe they had a, a big haunted house there. So um, it's situated on our northern uh, border, um, and it's right near the casino. Our, no, our other lease property is Radford Racing. Um, some of you may have known it as Bondurant. Um, and they, they lease from us, but they do um, performance-based driving. Um, if you ever want to go out there and get your adrenaline flowing, we certainly welcome you. Um, but they have partnerships with companies like Dodge. Um, I believe they um, test the Hellcat out there for people who buy the, uh, the Hellcat. Um, I've seen some of it. Uh, the governor uh, raced down the track during our last NHRA race. Um, we have pictures, um, <laughs> but um, they they will still continue to be there, even though, um, as you're aware, uh, we are closing the um, the motorsports park. But they will continue to be there. It doesn't really affect their lease property. So, next slide. Um, not too many people know this, but we do have property at Williams Gateway. Um, in 1995, this land was federally appropriated to the community. Um, we built a gas station, a Four Points property, as well as um, a golf course we call Thaka Sticks. And Thaka Sticks is uh, Thaka uh, to us is a tr traditional woman's stick game. Um, and that's where the name came from. So um, we are looking to redesign the golf course, um, getting some more uh, marketing opportunities for um, the different properties that are out there, but not too many people know that we we have property out there. Um, it's been out there a while. Our lieutenant governor sits on the Williams Gateway um, board out there. So the development side, um, we are uh, going to build a new grocery store that is in the governor's district, um, which is really the heart of the community um, in Sacatone. Um, we currently have one. It's very it's aged. Um, we are looking at a 20 acre master plan project in Sacatone. Um, it's going to be about 14,000 square feet. It'll have a deli counter, a bakery, um, as well. There'll be additional retail space. A gas station will be facing. Phase... 
we are looking to do a couple of more C stores. We are looking at um, the 202 and Bequeva Way, as well as um, State Route 347 and Riggs Road. Um, I give um, specific details on how big we foresee both, um, both projects. Um, we are excited about these projects. This is new uh, retail development for us as far as our gas stations are concerned. This last part of development um, is, is really um, something that's near and dear to the community. I don't know if some of you are aware. Um, in the 1970s, the community established what we call the Hill River Arts and Crafts, and it was a museum, a restaurant, and a gift shop um, and a small park. Um, for us, it was a great place of gathering for the community. Um, the District 5 community uh, has spearheaded the project. Um, and we, um, as WIPTA, have uh, taken on the endeavor of finishing the project. Um, it'll continue to be um, culturally themed, very important to um, that district that we continue to keep it, obviously adding some commercial aspects to it. There are a couple of projects in development that I didn't put on here because we are under NDA, but they, are, they would be uh, regional impact. Um, type of development and it, it's it's not on the slide but um, one of the other things we're working on because we are we do the C stores um, is we are working on the Gila River fuel tax exemption program um, as most of you are aware as members of um, of a tribe within Arizona if you are a community member um, you reside within the bounds of the community and you purchase gas within the community you have a right to ask the state for 18 cents per gallon off of your fuel gallon. Right now, if community members want to do it, they have to keep every receipt and turn it in. Um, what ADOT and the community are working on is um, the depiction of the image is, is what the card will look like. Car community members will go to our enrollment office, get their card, and when they go to our gas stations, they'll be able just to put in the card and automatically receive the 18 cents off. On the back end is, is with this fund is the reconciliation of that. <laughs> um, so we're excited for it. Um, it's the first, we are the first tribe in Arizona. Obviously, we hope there are other tribes who are able to capitalize off of this, um, but we expect the pilot program to start in July. Um, I highlighted Gila River Sand and Gravel. It's one of our, they just um, were granted a lease for a new pit that's on State Route 87. Um, that will primarily service the Far East Valley. Um, I believe their acreage is about two, uh, excuse me, 300 acres. Um, and so uh, that is, I would say more towards, if we're focusing on the East Valley, it's more towards the Santan area where that option is gonna be available. As well, they also formed um, Gila River Construction Company. Um, I'm, I'm excited about that just to see how um, they will grow that business for the community on behalf of the community for under Hill River Sand and Gravel. Next slide. So this is the end of our presentation. Um, uh, I chose animals um, and how um, obviously not only are we able to impact economically, but we're able to bring back um, things that were key to us as a tribe. Um, when you involve water, uh, you see what comes. Uh, we, have, we have birds. It's not, um, I'm surprised somebody hasn't contacted me. There's, there's always a family of bobcats that are within the area. Um, but to me, this is full circle for the community um, and bringing back wildlife um, and bringing back life to um, the desert. Um, and so that's how I wanted to close the presentation because it really speaks to us as a community and our natural resources as well. Um, but um, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Governor Lewis, thank you for doing an amazing job as chairman, as always. Um, we appreciate your leadership on not only on our side, but as well as um, on a regional level. So um, I know you won't be a stranger to us, but um, we appreciate your, always your support. Um, you're always there if we, if we call. Um, but I, I certainly um, hope that uh, you continue to serve on the on on Mag. But yeah, thank you very much. Um, on the last slide just show highlights um, some of our our businesses. Th thank you, Ms. Anton. Are there any questions or comments? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really great. You know, it's about economic development, but 
and everything you showed is fantastic, but I have a question, Are is your um, entity involved in any type of housing development or anything out there or affordable housing or anything like that, or is that a different branch? Mr. Chair? <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Go, go right. Um, we, as a community, um, we have our own within the community initiatives. Um, you, you see Pima leasing on there. Um, they have loans available um, for housing um, as well. The community has programs um, within uh, the tribal government um, that speaks to um, affordable housing, uh, very affordable housing um, for our members. Um, as far as within the Wild Horse Pass area, obviously it is trust land. Um, the community I know has um, spoke to apartments possibly in the area, um, but it would be open to initially our community members. Um, we do have regulations about, you know, um, non-community members residing within the community. It's a great question. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's just seeing all this wonderful development. It's like, okay, the community, you know, so mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to ask the question. And plus, housing is an issue in right. the Phoenix area. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, thank you, uh, Ms. Anton. And Ms. Anton, she's really an example, I know, of, of tribes cultivating our own uh, our own uh, talent and leadership. And so I think that's, you know, I think it's important that we have our own tribal members running these important uh, departments and divisions and opportunities, especially for economic development. So, you know, I really uh, appreciate Ms. Antone's presentation, educating uh, our region, MAG, uh, on all the, 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 the great things we're doing in the community, but more modeling this type of, of, of uh, potential partnerships because um, we have 21 other tribes in Arizona, and, and this shows the potential uh, for, for other partnerships within our region, within the state, uh, how we can work together on a lot of these regional issues. So again, thank you, Ms. Anton. Really, really thank appreciate you, your presentation. Thank you. Now we'll move on, and we'll move on to the Phoenix Suns Showcase of Arizona's Tribal Nations. So I, I want to welcome up. Uh, Sean Martinez, the Senior Director of Live Presentation, and Graham Wilcott, Senior Marketing Director, both with the Phoenix Suns and the Phoenix Mercury. And they're going to provide just an important report, uh, overview of the originative campaign and an update on the programming for the next exciting season. Now, this item is on the agenda for information and discussion, and you probably have seen some of the beautiful turquoise uniforms that our Phoenix Suns wore this past year. Uh, just a, a, a lot of... Uh, of great uh, originative nights focus on educating the partnership between the Phoenix Suns and Phoenix Mercury with our with, with the the tribes, uh, 22 tribes throughout Arizona and the Gila River community. We were an important uh, part of this partnership, and uh, I know that this uh, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll have them uh, talk about just the whole planning and and, and the overall uh, really success uh, of this really I think un unprecedented. Uh, by any major, if not in Arizona, uh, any major professional franchise that have really paid tribute uh, to tribal nations. So with that, I'll turn it over to, to both Graham and to Sean. Thank you for the kind introduction, Governor. Uh, it's an honor to be here speaking to the Maricopa Association of Governments and representing the Phoenix Suns. Uh, so uh, last November, we introduced a program called Originative. Um, this was uh, rolled out in conjunction with the City Edition program. Uh, which is a Jersey program uh, annually released by the NBA. Next slide, please. The idea here was to use our platform as an NBA team uh, and partner with and collaborate with the 22 tribal nations of Arizona to use our platform to elevate their stories and represent them in an authentic way that they were a part of from the very beginning of the development. Uh, so this program was over two years in the making, uh, tons of research, ton of, of collaborations and learning on our part on how we could bring this story to the nation and beyond and really teach the world about the 22 uh, sovereign nations that call Arizona home. Side, please. The uniform itself uh, had several keys that were uh, learnings that we brought from the tribal communities. First, the color, the turquoise, the uh, representing the protection stone or the living stone, uh, which is something that is very close and dear to all the communities here in Arizona. Uh, we invented a special logo or seal for this program based on the medicine wheel, another symbol that has great importance to the tribal communities. One of the most important elements on this uniform 
is you see the black tape running down the sides of the uniform. Within this tape, we have the uh, direct translation for the word for the sun from all 22 nations. Now, a reason why this is important is it shows the resiliency and the rich culture of these nations. Many of these languages have been spoken for thousands of years, and not all of them have always been written. So these languages and these words represent just the perseverance that they are still thriving today, and these languages are still living. Uh, within the, the number set, we have the colors of the medicine wheel. There's also a step pattern on the side of the uniform, and along the base of the shorts, not pictured here, are 22 arrowheads to represent the 22 tribal nations. Next slide, please. Now, we weren't going to just roll this out without educating our players and all of our employees before we brought this to the community. The first day that our players received these uniforms, uh, Governor Lewis and my colleague Sean Martinez and myself did an education section with all the players. They were presented their uniforms along with these handmade medallions and told the story of why these were important to the communities. Every player on the team knew the story, what they were wearing and what they were representing. And they took great pride on that as they took the court. Another very important element is we had them meet with youth representatives from all 22 nations, making sure they knew the people they were inspiring, got to learn about their cultures and really take that to the community as they went out to represent these communities. Next slide, please. Here's some amazing shots that came from that day. So you see Devin Booker, Chris Paul and Cameron Payne wearing these beautiful uniforms and the passion they brought with it. Uh, they wore these with pride on the court and uh, I think made a massive impact. Uh, many people around the country started to call the Phoenix Suns, including Governor Lewis, Native America's team, and that's some, a designation that we really put great pride into. Next slide, please. They also played on this court uh, that is also inspired by the uniform and the program. You'll see along the sideline at the base of the picture, we have the words for the sun there representing the, the tribal nations here in Arizona, and this was seen on TV across uh, the country. You'll also notice in the baseline, the entire program was presented and hosted by Gila River Indian Community and the resorts and casinos. So tremendous to partner with their community uh, to host all the nations we brought them to Phoenix and to be able to show these showcase these great cultures to our community and fan base. And I'll turn it over to Sean to talk about our very first night on the court and bring together the 22 tribal nations. Yeah, it's a Sean Benataba Martinez, the Bethesian Aisle. My name's Sean. They call me Gray Eyes Martinez. Um, I represent the Navajo Nation, the Dene Nation, and Black Sheep Clan, and I was born for the Yucca Strung Out on the Line Clan. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Governor, for inviting us here. This program has been unbelievable for the community. It, it's going to choke me up because it meant so much to every tribe, all the youth, providing hope providing hope to adults as well. So this picture here signifies something that probably hasn't happened in a while, but we got, we were able to reach out to all 22 tribal nations and invite a representative from the tribe. We presented them each with the jacket, which they wear very proudly. I know Governor Lewis has wore it to Washington, DC to not only tell the story of our 22 tribal nations here, but this grew across the nation, all the way to DC, all the way up to Alaska. So we were telling our story and it was being amplified. It was just like a tsunami that just kept going and saying, man, what are they doing in Phoenix? It's just unbelievable. But this moment right here was something that meant so much to all the tribal leaders that were there for me, just being able to showcase what we built here because the two-year process, I wasn't even part of the Phoenix Suns when this started. Graham reached out to me to consult. I was a part of the Detroit Pistons. And for some reason, everything just kind of flowed the right direction. And I ended up here and I'm here with my family and with my tribe, with my community. So next slide. Telling the story of all the tribal nations and being able to have them perform. And we asked them to send us submissions of who wants to perform. It wasn't forced. We asked them, we want, if you want to tell your story, you tell us and we bring you in. The slide on the top left, Indigenous Enterprise, showed our powwow style of dancing, which each of these groups had a chance to tell why they're wearing the regalia, what their dance is about, because we were educating our son's fan base on what we're about. That was one piece of it. Chichoni, Chichino was there with Gila River, who told their story as well. We had the guardians of the of the Grand Canyon, Ram Dancers, who, how are they going to get to our stage? How are they going to get to be on this court? They had to fly out on a helicopter on a certain day to come and tell their story. And we provided that for them. 
Apache Crown Dancers, Civic Q Apache Crown Dancers, unbelievable. This goes way back for me because I was so terrified of the, the clown there and the clay, just having them there and being able to take a picture with them. Because growing up, like I was like, man, these guys, I used to run as soon as they came out in the parade on the Navajo Nation parade. But there's another story behind that, but I don't know if we have enough time. Just the clay that he was wearing was all over the court that night. I'm like, guys, we got to sweep this up. What are we going to do here? So they started sweeping it toward me. I'm like, no, sweep it the other way. I kept checking in. I'm like, well, there's still grip here. The players are still going to do the thing. We were just blessed by the, by the Apache Crown dancers that night. Salt River Basket dancers right there in the middle. Just an amazing uh, performance by them. And then the uh, uh, hoop dancers, the World Championship hoop dancers, the Sinquas, very close partners in this whole thing. You can go to the next slide. We talk about the Sinquas. They were a very big part in making this Phoenix Suns drum, which was unbelievable. And just if you want to kind of go through some of that with that. Yes. Yeah, so prior to every game, uh, we actually had the Sinquas come out and perform a victory song before the Suns would take the court. Uh, so we had this drum created authentically um, to represent just a way to bring everybody together. And, um, you know, the drum represents a calling, bringing uh, people home, uh, Mother Nature calling her people home. So we thought it was a great way to bring people into the arena prior to the games. And this is something we want to live on for many years. Another thing that we really want wanted to do is make a permanent installation within our arena. And uh, thank you with the support from Gila River. Uh, we were able to make this installation of the 22 tribal flags of Arizona. So this is something that is in our arena in perpetuity and will be there forever. So anytime any member of any tribal nation comes in, the first thing they see when they walk in the door is their flag proudly displayed in our arena. Next slide, please. Just back to that flag slide. Oh, my goodness. Every tribal member comes into our arena and takes a picture by that, which leads us to this. Um, when the jersey came out, I was in Washington, D.C. I was performing at the Smithsonian for their Veterans Memorial dedication. And that day was just <laughs> unbelievable because of what it meant to all the tribes. We have our. Navajo code talker there, the guy on the left of the Navajo code talker. I'm in McDonald's. I hear my name, Sean. I'm like, who knows me in Washington, D.C.? It's my little league coach from Chinle, Arizona. His dad's a Navajo code talker. Just like, what is happening here? Just good things keep happening. Being able to be DJ at all these events. Governor got us a great meet and greet with Deb Holland, which was also unbelievable. I told her about my uncle the late uh, Senator John Pinto from New Mexico. So all these ties, these synergies that became bigger than life. Big, this whole program was bigger than basketball. We have Miss Navajo there, Valentina DeClay. Look at us, Washington, D.C. Kids who grew up on the Navajo Reservation there, taking a picture with this jersey program. We also were a part of the Navajo Nation Parade. We won first place. I brought the gorilla down there. We were kind of planting the seeds. We were throwing out turquoise shirts. All my people were like, why are they throwing us turquoise shirts? But we were planting the seed, building the program, trying to get some excitement. As soon as the jersey came out, they're like, oh, I got one of the shirts. So just doing those little things to kind of make sure everybody knew what was coming. And as you can tell, I'm still very excited about the program. I wish it could be every year. I just, it just, it hits my heart every day, every time I talk about it. So next slide. Talk about this. So some of the ways that the program will live on. Um, so over the past season, we uh, partnered with NABI, the Native American Basketball Invitational, and had our designers design their uniforms for the next several years. So this year, they celebrate their 20th anniversary, uh, and their tournament will have the finals played at our arena. Um, so the, the children will be participating, the athletes will be participating, will be able to wear this jersey. It's reversible. You'll see there's a black and there's a blue one. Um, and they'll be able to wear these on the court, the same court that I showed you earlier. So really, you know, this program that started with the inspiration of the basketball community uh, within the Native American uh, culture here in Arizona comes full circle as these uniforms will be worn by the NABI athletes. For uh, In addition to this, over the course of this summer, the Phoenix Suns will be making uh, in-person visits to all 22 tribal nations. Uh, through Phoenix Suns Charities uh, grant program, we will be delivering uh, grants to all 22 nations to help impact uh, youth sports throughout uh, the indigenous communities of Arizona. And then going into next season, although our Jersey program with Nike City Edition is a one-year program, uh, we are committed to the, to the tribal communities being a core part of our brand moving forward. 
Um, so you'll see commitments from us on Indigenous Peoples Day in October, uh, um, Native American Heritage Month in November, and several more originative theme nights happen throughout the next uh, several seasons and in perpetuity as long as, as we have anything to say about it. So. I say one more thing about our partners for this whole program, just starting from Detroit coming in, NABI, Intertribal Council of Arizona, Phoenix Indian Center, Cahokia, Unity. We reached out to all these people so we could get their feedback and wanted to hear how they wanted to be represented, how we wanted to be represented through the Suns brand. And just Governor Lewis was a great partner. He was out there every time we did a Hero of Native American Basketball. All these little touch points for the program were just amazing. You walk in the building, you see the flags, you get your picture. We have a Native American DJ playing music, different styles of music. You come in, you hear the national anthem in Navajo, Apache, Pima, Hopi, all just like I was crying every time the anthem got sung. As you can tell, I'm a very it touches my heart, this whole program. Halftime, like I said, they were able to perform and tell their story. We were able to educate people. The shout outs from the players when they hear their different tribe, Navajo, Apache, you hear the pockets in the crowd of people screaming, yeah, that's me, yeah. You just hear people so proud of their heritage and proud of what tribe they're from. And just being able to work with Kahoki on all the visuals, the graphics, and giving that representation, representation to all 22 tribes has just an, been an amazing ride. I just want to thank all the partners, all the tribal leaders who were a part of that because it meant so much to us. Thank you, uh, Mr. Martinez and Mr. Wincott. I mean, it was truly a magical season there with all of those originative games. And, you know, I, I think it was a, a commitment of the Phoenix Suns. I mean, Graham and Sean for having the brainchild and for seeing it through, but having, of course, uh, management supporting this all along. It, it was amazing. And uh, it, it really allowed us to tell our story through sports. It was large, and, and I really love that uh, the quote. It's it's larger than basketball. When you when you attended those games, um, you know it was it was truly you know surrounded by the graphics, surrounded by the music and the cultural performances. It, you know, with the the turquoise jerseys. I mean, it, it was it was an amazing experience. Um, and to have when I was sitting uh, by some of the the um, our our own um, fans, and I heard I overheard well you know that there's 22 tribes in arizona and just that type of education go, says so much goes so much and and really you know promoting all of of the contributions that the tribes that that native americans have and and the history uh, that goes back so so far back and to have of course the players being champions as well and having those video uh, snippets of, of them um, announcing every tribe every 22 tribes um talking about on Phoenix, talking about the Hugum and the and the, the the canals that were built over a thousand years ago, that this is ancient, ancient land with a with so much history, um, but that we have a bright future ahead of us too. And when we all when we all respect each other, when we all come together in a house of of, of sports of of basketball, uh, amazing. Um, and I'm so proud that you're able to present this to Mag. Um, are there any questions or comments at this time? Yes, uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, I'm just very impressed uh, with this entire process that you presented here to, to this afternoon. It's it's like uh, thank you, Governor Lewis, for bringing this and 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 letting us all know, uh, you know, the involvement of, of the sons and the tribes in this process. Uh, I see it as such a great unifying aspect for our entire community. It really educates us on your culture and on, on your traditions and uh, also for your own uh, your own ancestry to bring them together and, and to recognize that. I, I really appreciate it, uh, what you had to say today. Thanks. I think one of the big things, even with this medallion, we made sure it was made by someone, a tribe from the state, a Navajo beater from Fort Defiance made all of these. And we were able to put eat one of these in each of the Jersey boxes that the players got. So they all got one. We were able to tell them, like I, they've seen me wear this since I got here, not this one, but I always wear one when I sit courtside and direct the games for the Suns. And it's something that when Native Americans are watching TV, they see me there and say, hey, that's one of us. And he's telling our story with just this alone because it gets people talking. We get to amplify our voices and bring hope to the Native American youth through this program. So it's just been a blessing. I, I didn't know the extent to, to how we were going to introduce 
uh, the the uniforms, we actually went into uh, the, the 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 Phoenix Suns their locker room, their the inner sanctum there, where they were actually where they actually you know they change and 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 prepare for their games. We're actually there. Where you know I'm I'm like pinching myself. I'm like wow, you know, you know just just uh, being a lifelong fan here of the Phoenix Suns and you know right standing right next to them. And so we, after we presented them, they were so gracious and, and they were so attentive uh, to all of the particulars having to do with. With, with the jersey, the, the, the color significance, the name of sons on every 22 tribal indigenous language uh, that was on the court, but also on the jerseys. And, and you know, they really appreciated um, just the, 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 the significance of that. So I'm just standing there and then they're just, then they're getting ready. They're, 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 they're taking off their clothes and they're getting ready, you know, to prepare them. I'm like, oh, I guess I got to go. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're on to the next thing. And, but we were able to present that to our, to, to the youth as well. Youth representing all the 22 tribes, which as, as Sean says, they represent our future, right. And having an opportunity uh, to, to really showcase that. And, and, to, and, and I think this is going to be, um, I think a campaign that's going to uh, an approach that, that already um, Graham, I think you're hearing from, from other uh franchises teams in the league that, that saw this and, and that potentially are looking at ways that they can incorporate uh these types of partnerships um that was that originated sort of pioneered and spearheaded yes we're being reached out to you by teams from across the country in canada trying to figure out ways to emulate the program and you know our real hope is we've set a new standard for you know how sports teams can work with indigenous peoples in an authentic way that's representative and not derivative that's great and and, and i really appreciated how we highlighted um, uh, native uh, Arizona tribal artists, both you know, both uh, halftime uh, the halftime shows, but also the ones that, that came up with uh, with designs that you know for for um, for T-shirts you know that were sold in, in the team shop, um, highlighted uh, tribal businesses as well for grants. Mm -hmm. So for the Gila River community and our gaming uh, Gila River gaming, um, you know, I think this was more than just uh, a marketing relationship. This really grew into something and evolved into something much more than that, right? And, and I think, you know, th this is something that is gonna raise, I think, as you said, Graham, raise the standards uh, for how, you know, major sports franchises can work with, with, with indigenous nations. And when we approached it, we didn't come at it as we know everything. Like sometimes something wasn't right, we got it fixed right away and we still continue to listen, even to this day from the tribal leaders, how can we, What's the next step? What are we going to do next? But they're always giving us their feedback. So we always made sure they had a voice in this program. That's great. Thank you so much. Are there uh, any other questions or comments? If not, thank you. And I heard that the Phoenix Suns, we have a new coach. Um, we, we, you know, we're very excited about this, this upcoming season, right? And, and this just in ESPN just signed Governor Lewis for a two-year contract. <laughs> He's going to play center. <laughs> Is it, is it one of those what uh, fifteen minute contracts or those those, special, <laughs> those limited contracts? Thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate you taking the time to come down here. Thank you all. We really appreciate you giving us the platform to show you guys this amazing program, which just speaks volumes to not only me but all the tribal nations across the country. Thank you. Well, as we continue on uh, the, the, this agenda. Um, we're on item eight, update on the extension of Proposition 400. Now, item eight is an, uh, is an update uh, that uh, Audra Costner Thomas of the MAG Transportation Planning Program Manager will provide. Uh, and this will be an update to our committee. Uh, and this, again, this is an item on the agenda for information and discussion. Thank you, Chairman Lewis, and what a privilege it is to follow a fantastic set of presentations today. I'm pleased to be with you today um, to give you a brief update on the extension of Proposition 400. Next slide. This committee is acutely aware of how important the dedicated half cent sales tax first established by voters back in 1985 is to the economic prosperity of the region and state. It is the region reason that this region is the economic engine for the state of Arizona after voters pulled together um, to enable a dedicated half cent sales tax to deliver transportation investments that otherwise would not have been delivered um, here in the state of Arizona. At the time, one of the first in the country to be established now 
um, a key that is used by so many regions across the country. Um, on, with the inability to extend our, I'm gonna pause for a moment to allow uh, a picture to be taken. No, no, I wanna be respectful, absolutely. The ability to be able to extend the dedicated half cent sales tax for future transportation investments are critical to our economic development. Without so doing so, we lose our competitive advantage. Next slide. We anticipate that local business uh, sales will decrease by over 4.5 billion each year. Next. That nearly 32,000 jobs year over year uh, will be lost. Um, important to note over 71% of these jobs are medium to high wage earning jobs. These are the kinds of jobs that local elected officials have been working decades to land here in this region. Next slide. Uh, businesses will be hit by higher traveling costs, totaling $40 billion. Next slide. And we estimate that shipping and logistics costs will increase by over $4 billion. Uh, this is part of a presentation, of course, this committee received earlier this winter, um, analysis that our elected officials and regional council directed MAG to conduct in partnership with GPEC um, to better understand the implications of not being able to extend uh, Proposition 400. Um, to date, uh, there has been a bipartisan budget passed and signed by the governor, but important legislation still remains. It's the region, reason the legislature has not signed he died yet. And of course, the extension of Proposition 400 enabling legislation is top of those lists. Uh, we continue to work diligently on this matter <clears throat> with our elected officials um, and, and working with uh, legislators as well as the governor's office. Um, <clears throat> important to note, the last couple of weeks we've received uh, considerable media press and attention uh, for which we've really been appreciative of so many members of the Economic Development Committee, both uh, business community members, as well as, of course, our elected leaders um, have participated, providing feedback, um, commentary um, that has been reported in the press. Uh, Arizona Republic editorial board, of course, weighed in on this matter um, 10 days ago, calling on a resolution ensuring that voters in Maricopa County had the opportunity to weigh in on this important matter. And we've had and seen daily press, um, including a series of articles published today in the Arizona Republic, many featuring um, the implications to your own individual communities for which we are grateful um, and are seeing a considerable amount of momentum around this issue can also report that Democratic members of both the House and Senate sent a letter to Governor Hobbs um, requesting that she sign a bill that enables implementation of the plan that was unanimously adopted here, um, recommended by TPC and then adopted by Regional Council. We have had ongoing conversations with uh, legislators, uh, legislative staff, and of course, the governor's staff, notably this week, a new chief of staff for the governor um, started and for which Mr. Campbell, um, we've been in constant communication with as he assumes responsibility in part for this kind of conversation. So we've been catching him up on the details associated um, with our work uh, that has convened over the course of really the better part of five years. Um, we believe uh, when the legislature comes back after recess on Monday that things may move quickly. And so we ask that you stand ready um, to be able to engage if necessary. We also see, of course, the economic impacts, but all of you know that there are discrete and deliberate transportation projects that deliver and improve mobility for our region that are included in this plan. I wanna tie this back to uh, a part of Ms. Antone's presentation earlier about the importance of some of these projects. Not only do we have funding in the existing Proposition 400 program uh, for improvements along I-10 um, and access improvements along Wild Horse, uh, the Development Authority. We also, of course, include 
additional improvements uh, is part of the extension of Proposition 400, and that includes well horse AI as well as improvements. Seven, widening that infrastructure, making it more safe, also continuing down to the city of Maricopa. Considerable number of projects that are critical and will not otherwise happen without uh, the continuation of the dedicated half cent sales tax. And I appreciate Ms. Antone's um, highlighting of some of those projects. Uh, we very much value the partnership that we have with the Gila River Indian community, Astro of our transportation staff. Um, on the day-to-day -day activities associated with not only the I-10 project, but Wild Horse Pass in partnership with the Gila River Indian community. So with that, I just want to acknowledge um, certainly the activities of our elected officials. Many of you who have been very active, I appreciate it. At MAG, as well as members of the business community, several of you um, online as well, who have been active in these ongoing conversations. We look to find resolution. We stay resolved to find resolution on this matter, this legislative session, to enable voters to have a voice in continuing this important dedicated half cent sales tax for our future. Um, that completes my presentation. Um, and Zerker and I stand ready to answer any questions. Thank you, Ms. Thomas, for, for, for that update. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Yes, um, Vice Mayor. Thank you very much for your presentation. I always appreciate the updates. As a board member of Valley Metro, I wanted to personally thank and Ed for all that you've done in facilitating and being so diligent, paying attention to Prop 400, um, you know, uh, moving forward, educating people on it, educating, you know, you came out to Fountain Hills, you presented before the council, you've been educating all of the elected officials. I mean, it's it's a, the magnitude of what you do and what you guys are achieving with this is very much appreciated. So thank you, I appreciate it. There are any other comments? Um, if not, and, and again, thank you for, for highlighting the community's um, participation in, in this as well. I know MAG has been a, a great partner as we identify all things transportation, uh, whether it, it touches Proposition 400, uh, funding the, the I-10 widening as well. And in fact, uh, you know, I, we, we, we came together, it was really a, a one-in-a-kind uh, tripart uh, group that, that is looking at funding both with state Arizona Department of Transportation MAG and the Gila River Indian community in partnership, working together to, to apply for federal funds um, from DOT. And I think that shows, you know, exactly the, the, the partnership and the collaboration that can occur and that really, as, as we see, needs to occur to address these transportation issues, especially in, in this critical time. And so, uh, again, the community appreciates the, the partnership with MAG as we, um, it, it's, you know, we're still working through the process, but uh, I think this, this also demonstrates a, a template or an example uh, of, of other tribes working with regional organizations such as MAG, working with the state as well. So hopefully, you know, this, this, um, this innovative way and in, in, in looking, uh, applying for federal funds is, is uh, successful for, for all those involved. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Okay, uh, with that, we will go down to item nine, which is a, a request for future agenda items. Are there any requests for, uh, or by a, a committee member for items on a future agenda? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, MAG recently had a report, um, and you can correct me on the term, but on air quality, essentially strategies for air quality that might be important for this committee to hear, um, given the, the implications to economic development. I don't, I don't remember what the report was named, but strategies essentially between now and, econo and economic development probably be helpful for this committee. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, especially after that. That excellent, um, I think it was a, a couple of, uh, of of committee meetings ago, on or the past, I guess the the, the, the last uh, committee meeting on implications of of this as well. Um, Ed, Mr. Chair, we'd be happy to make that presentation uh, at the next meeting. Thank you. Are there any other potential comments or recommendations? If not, okay. Thank you. Now we go down to. Uh, item 10, comments from the committee. Are there any comments or announcements from the membership at this time? Uh, yes. Mr. Chair, if I could, I think uh, it would be in order for us to thank you 
for your leadership this past year as chair of the committee. And uh, I would invite us all to give you, express our appreciation to you for that service. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. No, it, 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 it was an honor. And, and if I can just say a, um, uh, a, a few words as well, um, as we wrap up, um, just I know out of respect to, to everyone's time. Um, so while, while many can easily see, and this was a reflection of today's agenda, uh, can see the economic impact of tribal gaming in Arizona, which my fellow tribal leader, Chairman Miguel from Ak Chin has already spoken to, Tribes can, can and do have major economic development impacts in many other less visible ways. Now, obviously, the community's very significant water supplies are a critical element of Arizona's economic future, uh, as are those of other tribes as well. Based on the shrinking water table throughout the state, uh, that it is a safe to say that the future of Arizona's economic development is going to become increasingly dependent on tribal water supplies going forward. Uh, we also are engines for direct economic investment in the state. The community, for example, is opening a brand new hospitality facility near the Chandler border, uh, which was uh, Santan Mountain Casino. And I, I will get uh, invitations out uh, to all of the MAG membership as well. That represents over $100 million in construction jobs over the past two years of construction and over 700 new permanent jobs going forward. Now, our sister tribe, the Thon Otham Nation, also is embarking on a similar investment in the West as we were briefed, uh, which will have similar economic impacts. Now, tribes are also magnets for federal investment in the region, which also fuel our local economy in the short and long term. The community has just launched an $83 million investment in reclaimed water pipeline project, most of the material, which is being sourced from Casa Grande, uh, as is the construction management and actual construction. And finally, tribes are genuine innovators, which also drive economic development forward as well. Now, one example is our solar covered canal pipeline project, which through a relatively minor federal investment of $6.5 million will produce over one megawatt of power from a very short stretch of canal, uh, while at the same time saving water from evaporation and driving forward uh, our goal of a net zero ag economy concept for the future. So you can see there are many ways that tribes in Arizona contribute to the overall economic future of the state, a future that is brighter and stronger due to the strong connection and relationships we enjoy throughout the Valley and through organizations like the Maricopa Association of Governments. So thank you for the opportunity to serve this great organization uh, in this committee. Uh, now at this time, are we gonna bring up uh, the uh, Arizona slides? Okay, so as in prior years, MAG staff is partnering with the League of Arizona Cities and Towns and Sonoran elected officials to bring you the 10th annual Arizona Council meeting on Thursday, uh, be the 31st of August at the Star Pass Resort in Tucson. I've stayed there before, beautiful resort. Uh, Vice Chair Molnar will be the MC. Okay, I look forward to that. Um, mark your calendars, all of us, and we hope to see you at the Arizona Council meeting in Tucson in August. Um, and this is just for information. Uh, the committee will be taking a break in August and there will be no meeting at MAG. Uh, instead, again, we look forward to seeing you at the Arizona Council meeting in Tucson on Thursday, the 31st. With no further business, today's meeting is adjourned. <laughs>